In today's video, I'm going to be talking all about leathery raw materials and perfumery. So if you saw my video last time, I did a video on animalic raw materials. Today we're going to do a specific subcategory of animalic raw materials, those being leathery raw materials. And you may have guessed it, those are just pretty much raw materials that smell like leather or can be used to make some kind of leather accord. And leather smells are quite popular. They have been for a long time. And even today you've got things like Tuscan Leather by Tom Ford. Now, leather and perfumery have been pretty intertwined for centuries. For example, back in the day, you had things like Spanish leather, Hungarian leather, uh, French leather, and these different types of levers because the tanning process for leather didn't necessarily smell so nice. Sometimes leathers were perfumed. So, for example, Spanish leather was perfumed with rose water, camphor, cedarwood, whereas Italian leather was more often perfumed with things like sweet almond and orris. On top of that, leather perfumes have been popular for about a century and actually a whole genre of fragrances called Cuir de Russie fragrances uh, started from that, where Cuir de Russie means Russian leather. Probably the most famous one was Chanel's Cuir de Russie, which was launched in 1924. Now, Cuir de Russie or Russian leather, that really is specifically a smell based around the Russian type of leather. And that leather was very popular back in the day, and that got its unique smell from something called birch tar. So when you've got birch trees which grow in the wild, you can actually go and essentially burn them and then distill it to create this unique essential oil that smells really smoky. And then that used to be used with the leather to help give it this kind of smoky leather smell. So actually often the smell of leather is associated with that Russian leather smell. Anyway, so onto the raw materials. The first one we're gonna smell is something called Suederal LT. Now just for reference, all the raw materials that I'm gonna be smelling in this video have been diluted down to 1% and that's because most of these leathery raw materials are actually really strong. So it's easier to smell them at 1%. It just gives you a more accurate representation of what they actually smell like. Because sometimes, you know, when things are quite strong, um, it can actually overpower your nose and you don't actually smell the kind of smell that would be coming through if you use them in a perfume. So I've got the Suederal LT right here. Now, Suederal LT, what does it smell like? Well, it really just smells like leather, I would say. If you're gonna smell it and describe it, that's pretty much the first thing that comes to mind. And it smells to me like leather in the sense that, you know, when you go into say a car showroom and you go into a brand new car and you have leather seats, it's that kind of leather or the kind of leather of a brand new leather handbag. It gives you that new luxury product kind of feeling. So Suede Rail LT, what is it? Well, this is actually a pre-made base and it's made by IFF and it pretty much is designed to do exactly what it does, which is to smell like leather, i.e. essentially this is just a pre-made leather record. So essentially what happened is all of the scientists at IFF, the ones who have been studying the smell of leather, have gone and identified the molecules inside the smell of leather and then they've tried to do their best reconstruction of the smell of leather and this is what they came up with. Now I found it to be a top note, i.e. it only really seems to last about 12 hours or so on the scent strip, at least when diluted down to 1%. So I wouldn't expect this to last too long inside of your perfumes. Um, that said, if you've got some fixatives in there or something else that's a bit leathery, it might help pull it down a bit more into the mid note. But overall, this one, honestly, I really would recommend. If you were just gonna get one leather raw material, say you wanted to add a leather note to your perfumes, then this is the one I would recommend getting because you can simply use it straight out of the tin and it adds a leather note. You don't have to go and blend around constructing your own leather accord. So next we're going to discuss a very traditional leather note and this one is something called isobutyl quinoline and this one is just a single molecule aroma chemical. So this one was first produced for perfumery by the Delaire company and they were a company that used to produce aroma chemicals and they were founded all the way back in 1895. Now back in the day uh, when they started producing aroma chemicals a lot of the aroma chemicals they produced were kind of these harsh or very weird foreign abstract smells. And at the time, perfumers didn't really know how to use them. To solve this, what they did was they went and packaged them up as part of pre-made bases. These bases were designed to kind of smell nice from the get-go so they could easily slot into perfumes. Perfumers could use them as if they were naturals, things like, you know, orange oil or something which naturally smells a lot nicer. 
And it also had an added side benefit of allowing these companies to actually hide the molecules that they were putting in their bases, because back in the day, chemistry wasn't advanced, so you couldn't analyze things in the same detail as you could today. So if a substance wasn't pure, it would be much harder to actually go and work out what was inside of it. So isobutylquinoline. Well, this was actually used by the Delaire company in two of their very famous bases, those being Cuy de Roussy and Mousse de Saxe. Now, Cuy de Roussy, Russian leather, is essentially in a core designed to mimic Russian leather, that thing I described at the start of the video. Mousse de Saxe, on the other hand, is something that was traditionally used a lot in Chypre style perfumes, and this was meant to smell like a tiger's lair, quote unquote, and the isobutylquinoline was blended in with other things like geranium, uh, ionones, vanillin, and different notes, and it was meant to kind of soften it up a lot, because when we go and smell this, well, I'll smell it now, it's a very harsh, I would almost say petrol leaning style of leathery smell. To me, it's got these kind of astringent fruity notes to it as well. It's also very strong, so I can really see why you might have trouble using this or figuring out where to put it in a perfume, especially if you were an early perfumer and you've never seen it before. Now this one actually has quite a strong character and I've also found that it seems to last into the midnight. So if you want something that lasts a little bit longer than Suederal, or say you want to extend it with something that's quite distinctive and bold, then isobutylquinoline is something you can do that with. Now I will note that whole thing that I said before about manufacturers using uh, these kind of secret molecules in their bases, this is something that's still done today. And while today you can usually detect the molecules inside of something due to analytical chemistry techniques, some of these molecules have been patented and they're still quote unquote captive for that specific fragrance company. So for example, Amber Extreme was actually recently released from being a captive, but before that you could actually only get hold of it inside of the Cashmeran Velvet base, which was a base designed to make Cashmeran a bit more palatable, nicer, um, softer and easier to use. Finally then, we're gonna talk about another raw material and this one is called Castorium. And this one actually comes from beavers. Yeah, the cute little animals that go and eat away at tree trunks. So castorium, what it basically is, is this kind of secretion produced by the beavers. And what it's for is apparently A, marking their territory, and then B, waterproofing their fur so they can go and do all the little beaver things that they do, like swimming around in the water and making their dams, which kind of makes sense. I guess you want to have some waterproof fur for that. Pretty cool, right, huh? Now, unfortunately, back in the day, the beavers were hunted for both their fur and also the castorium that they produce. And it's really quite sad because actually the way this was extracted was by taking the gland out of the beaver, which required killing the beaver, and then it was dried and extracted. And people use this in perfumery. Now, luckily these days that is banned in most places and that doesn't really happen anymore. It might happen from some people who are unethically doing it but apparently it can now be obtained sustainably as well. Now, I actually happened to have stumbled across a sample of this, which I obtained as a free sample with one of my raw materials orders. And this is apparently real castorium resinoid. So this actually is the real stuff and I'm gonna let you know what it smells like. Oh, and by the way, unlike the other things in this video, this one's diluted down to 5%. So I was really quite surprised after smelling this because when you go and smell it, initially, the smell that I got from it was the smell of truffles. And I've got one raw material called Porcini Absolute, which was extracted from some kind of mushroom. And this is the raw material that probably it reminds me of closest to. So it's this strong kind of animalic um, truffle mushroom kind of smell. And it does have these kind of sweet aspects to it and these leathery aspects to it as well. And in fact, castorum used to be used in various leather accords, and it also used to be used as a fixative. And honestly, as an animalic raw material, I thought it would be kind of disgusting, but it actually smells quite nice. Now, apparently the smell can vary quite a bit depending on the diet of the beavers. And while it used to be quite popular, apparently the smell of castorum isn't so popular anymore, but apparently it does still have quite a strong place in oud accords and oud perfumes. So if you're interested in oud and making that kind of perfume, then you could always consider some kind of castorium notes go alongside of that. Now I also found when I let this dry down on the scent strip for a day, the mushroom or truffle smell really went away. And I actually noticed that it really started to remind me a little bit of beeswax, a little bit like beeswax absolute and also real beeswax, just a very faint kind of sweet alemannic scent. So yeah, this stuff was really quite interesting. 
Now, what's much more widespread in terms of castorium these days is synthetic castorium. So this is just like the Suederal base, a base designed by big fragrance companies. Uh, this one in particular is Givaudan Castorium 116 base, I believe. And this is where the scientists have gone analyze the molecules inside of castorium and try to reproduce the most accurate smell that they can. And obviously by doing this, it doesn't involve any real beavers at all, which is a big plus. So this castorium base, well to me, I don't actually think it does the best job, at least straight away, of smelling like the real castorium. Now this to me smells a lot more, um, it's definitely still got the sweet notes from the castorium and it's got some of the kind of musky uh, animalic notes and it does have some play-doh notes which it shares with it, but it really doesn't have the kind of distinctive uh, truffle smelling animalic rich, uh, let's say deep notes that the real castorium has. But what I did find, however, is as it dries down, I do think it gets a little bit closer, but it still doesn't have that kind of beeswax smell that the real castorium had. It just kind of has the general, um, let's say, animalic, musky kind of, sweet musky kind of notes. Next then, I've got here something called paracresol. And this one is an aroma chemical and it's naturally found inside of castorium. Now I just happen to have this and I think it smells quite leathery, which is why I'm including it in this video. So this one actually, for a single aroma chemical, does a pretty good job at the smell of leather. Again, this one kind of reminds me of that new car smell or you know that kind of new leather smell. Although this one, unlike the Suede Oral, it's a lot less of a kind of complete 3D leather smell. This one, actually has some of the more, let's say, I call them kind of a Play-Doh smelling uh, aspects, and that's because they remind me of the Play-Doh, that kid's toy. And it, it smells a lot more like that, um, and it's a lot more one-dimensional. But that said, if you're gonna build your own leather accord, then this is something you might consider using. Apparently you can also use this stuff in various floral accords. And again, this one was quite a top note, a little bit like the Suede Oral. So just bear that in mind if you're thinking of using it. So yeah, this is just an interesting one. I probably think out of all the ones in this video, uh, this one is the most niche and the one that you're least likely to use unless you have a specific reason to use it. Uh, but nonetheless, it's still fairly interesting. Now finally, I've got something else which probably counts as part of a leathery raw materials category. And this one is actually quite similar to the birch tar, which I said was found in that Russian leather smell originally. So you can get a birch tar oil, which is used in perfumery. I don't actually have that, but I have something very similar, which is cade oil. Now they're just different types of tree. So birch is one type of tree and cade oil comes from a relative of juniper, which is another kind of tree or shrub. Now with these oils, it's very important that if you're using them in perfumery, make sure you buy one that's been rexified. And that's because the way these are produced is by something called destructive distillation. That essentially means heating up the wood in the absence of much oxygen. And that means the way that the things burn is they essentially become this kind of black smoky tar. And as part of that, you can get some quite dangerous compounds. So the idea is to have those removed. What it smells like is if you ever had a bonfire or you've burned a really large amount of wood, and then once the fire has kind of subsided, you have all of that ashen, charred wood, and it's that really sickly strong uh, burnt wood smell. This is pretty much what that smells like. Now, what I have found is that if you go and leave this on the scent strip, so after a day or so, and bear in mind, this is at 1%, but it's still extremely strong. So in your actual perfumes, you'd only wanna use this in tiny, tiny traces. But then if you and leave it on the scent strip, after a while, it does start to mellow out. So after one day, I felt it smelled a lot more like a kind of a smoky cedarwood smell, but it wasn't so much kind of like sickly charred burnt wood anymore. It was more just like a kind of, a kind of slightly smoky with sweet nuances, uh, cedar wood or other kind of wood. So it really does over time mellow out and get a bit nicer. So this stuff, again, if you wanted to make a Russian leather accord, what you could then go and do is get one of the leather smells or so something like the isobutyl quinoline or the suede oral base. And then you can go and blend it with some of this either cade oil or birch tar oil. And then you can create your own kind of Russian leather, something like that. 
I also feel like this could be quite useful if you ever wanted to make some kind of barbecue smell or some kind of smoke note, say like a cigarette note or bonfire note in one of your perfumes or some kind of fiery, um, you want it, I don't know, let's say you wanted to invoke like the element of fire that kind of thing, then you could go and use some of this stuff. But anyway, if you're gonna use this stuff, make sure that you, well, I firstly would suggest you use small amounts, but definitely try to get hold of an IFRA certificate. If you're using the crude oil, then just do not use that in perfumes because it's not safe to use. Make sure you get the rectified one and try to get an IFRA certificate to check the safe use level to go and use it at. So anyway, that is the leather, raw materials and perfumery. Of course, there are gonna be more individual aroma chemicals and little things that you could use, things like that paracresol. There are loads of other different things like cresols that you can get, but I hope in this video, I've given you kind of a flavor of some of the different main things that you would use, especially if you wanna get a leather note in your perfumes. And oftentimes it wouldn't even be worth making a leather record. You would just go and use something like the suede around because it's easier to do. But then obviously if you did wanna make a leather record or you wanted to kind of modify it in a certain way, then now hopefully you've got some of the tools to go and be able to do that. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time with another video all about perfumery.